Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where the wins don't matter and the plots are made up. I am your host, Matt Presents, joined, as always, by my Turkish co-host... Do you not hear it? I, I didn't hear what you said. No. Uh, I, I played I played the Indiana Jones theme. My 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 end will pick that up. I'm Turkish Mackle. You said it. <laughs> okay, sure. You can be Turkish Mackle. Actually, did oh no, it was an Indian film you sent me that was titled like Mackle. Or if something. you type in Mackle, there's a lot of Indian stuff that pops up. Honestly, Mackle should Ackle and movie Mackle. You get that. Uh, I guess that's yeah. I guess that's like an Indian name. Yeah. That's, it's, it's funny because it's, you're supposed to be doing like a subversion on Michael, but everyone who tries to read it thinks it's like an Indian name or something. Well, you know what the weirdest thing with Mackel is? You want to hear where like I came up with that? It, Cause it's stupid. It's really stupid. Sure. Um, I, you know, the filmmaker, Michael Moore. Yes. Well, I heard someone say Mackel Moore and I thought that they were making fun of Michael Moore. And I thought uh, I thought that sounded really. F- I don't even have anything against Michael Moore. Uh, I don't really know too much about his work. I saw Bowling for Columbine, and I think that's a decent documentary. But um, but I just thought that I just thought it was like a funny mockery of his name, Macklemore. Is like hey, Mackle. I'm gonna go by Mackle now. And then Mackle Shadackle came later. That was just kind of an improvised thing, but I th- it was a funny improvised thing, so I kept doing it. Uh, I I. I know you had made a Macklemore joke in in one of your videos before. I didn't know that's where the name came from originally. I, I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know that there was a musician named Macklemore. <laughs> right? It's it's not even it's not even Macklemore. It's like I thought I it was Macklemore. I thought it was Macklemore. Ma- I think it's Macklemore. Macklemore. Like the L, the L comes before the E. Huh. Yeah. The way. Anyway. The way I spelled, there's no E at all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, focus. T- uh, t- t- today we're uh, taking hollow victories overseas to the beautiful land of Turkey uh, for two ripoff films. I would, uh, yeah, okay, two two films that borrow pretty heavily from Western media. I don't know how much you could say either of these are ripoffs. Here's the it's thing. The man- Go ahead. If the if the one with Spider Man and Captain America came out just a few years later, you could absolutely accuse it of being a rip off film. But because I, they broke ground, I don't. There's not really any Captain America and Spider Man movies prior to this. There's fan films. There's projects that were tried to get off the ground, but there wasn't really. A, I think that this is the first movie featuring these two. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely the first one featuring that. the two of them together definitely beat Civil War to that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it's it's the man who saved the world versus three Dev Adam or three giant men in English. Yeah, three uh, giant men. Yes, and and uh, I suppose they are that. Although. Three is a little deceptive since there's there's more than one of the third one, but we'll, but we'll get to that. Let's start off by talking about the man who saved the world, shall we? Yes. Uh, the man who saved the world, sometimes called the man who saves the world, uh, also more commonly known by the title Turkish Star Wars because of uh, some excessive use of footage from... The, the original Star Wars right at the beginning there, as well as a few scenes throughout that feel really familiar. They do the cantina scene. Yeah. They also, they, they also kind of do the scene from Empire Strikes Back where he's like trapped by the Yeti. Um, mm. I know there's, there's like a Star Wars name for that species that I don't remember, but it's a Yeti. It's uh-huh. a fucking Yeti. Um, I think in this movie it straight up is just a Yeti. Uh, <laughs> the, the film is about, uh, Earth has been 
shot by the Death Star and blown into a bunch of pieces, and so humans live on, like, little comets throughout the solar system. But humans are special among the solar system because their their willpower is stronger than that of, like, any other species. The other species don't have brains. That is how the subtitles put it. I almost feel like what they meant was, like, minds or souls or something, but, uh... Subtitles say brains, so everyone but the humans don't have brains. Uh, and so this evil wizard is trying to, like, tap into the power of the human will to, to take over the universe. And, uh, our, our heroes, who, uh, I probably should have their names pulled up. <laughs> See, mine's easy, because it's just... Pre-existing characters. Uh, our, our, our main characters, Murat and Ali, find themselves on the planet of this evil wizard, trapped by him and having to uh, save both themselves and uh, a fair maiden they have come across from his evil grasp. Uh, Michael, what'd you think of Turkish Star Wars? Did you like it more than you like regular Star Wars? Oh, that's hard to answer. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I know you are not the biggest Star Wars fan. I, I don't dislike Star Wars. It's just not like... I. It's one of those... No, I get it. It's one of those things where I think it's neat. I think the first one especially is like monumental. Like I appreciate it more than I like it. Something that you've probably heard a million times about different films from different people. But I... You know, I, I guess for me it was just like I have a hard time grasping why some people want to dedicate their life to it, but I have spiny Norman, so I'm not allowed to talk. Um, <clears throat> the <laughs> so uh, I like regular Star. Okay, go ahead. Who do you think? Who do you think has it worse, Star Wars fans or Sonic? Star fans? Star Wars, one hundred percent. Okay. I mean, okay, like, I guess they get some cool stuff with, like, the books and the TV shows and some of the video games. But for the movies, it's just, like, not even commenting on the quality of the shows. It's just, like, one of the most annoying fan bases in existence. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm not even, like, if you're a Star Wars fan, don't take that as a personal attack if you're, like, just sitting there and enjoying the movies. I'm saying, like... There's people in that fan base that get angry over any single opinion that you can have. Um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely way more obnoxious to litigate Star Wars than, like, Sonic. Like, Sonic, there's a pretty established canon of, like, these are the good ones, these are the bad ones. And Sonic's got its like, obnoxious fans, but it's, like... To for me, sure. For me, it's mainly on Twitter nowadays. Like, Twitter, I hate... But I already fucking hate Twitter, you know? So, like, Twitter, it's really insufferable to read what people say sometimes on there because it's just people constantly attacking one another. But when you leave Twitter behind you and you, like, focus on YouTube or just, like, any, like, online discussion outside of that shitty website, it's pretty... I think the fan base has, like, chilled out significantly over the last few years. Um, like, even... Cla Sammy Classic Sonic fan seems like a pretty chill dude now, you know? Uh, yeah. But, um, I, yeah, so what I, I think... I, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just, just gonna redirect back to... The that's what I was... That, that's what I was about to do. Um, I wanted to start off by saying thank you for taking on this one for, like, the summary, because I... I, I can do Three Giant Men. For this one... Fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, it lost me, like, story-wise pretty quickly, because it's just, like, at it, it, it a point where it's like, I don't care at well, all what's happening in this. I don't care at all. The first three minutes are this, like, it's all footage from Star Wars <laughs> with, like, super dense lore drop right on you. Right at the beginning, before you get into fucking anything. And it's like, I... 
Star Wars had the text crawl, which granted, I think the text crawl was the the text crawl in Star Wars way less blunt, way less like shit going on than the introduction to this movie. Yeah, but uh <laughs> just also it's a text crawl. If if you really wanted to start this movie off, give us like 30 give us a 30 second text crawl. That's all we need. And get on with it. Not only that, but the text scroll in Star Wars is super memorable because it brings up that excellent music and it has like a really nice visual for the text scroll. Like it's not just black, like black background, white text scrolls up. No, they found a creative way to do it. The text scrolls are kind of something to look forward to whenever a new Star Wars comes out, you know, Um, just because they found a really unique way to present it. Where this one, it reminds me of the uh, Southland Tales deleted scene that you sent me. <laughs> Where it's like, here, let's exposition dump a whole different movie onto you. Yeah. Except it wasn't a whole different movie in this case. But just in the sense where it's like, it's throwing so much at you and it's like, Man, I, I don't. That's not a good way to get people invested. It's. I, I think your opening scene is one of the most important, and when you do an exposition dump, that's no good. I. I don't. So again, Star Wars found a creative way to do it and a quick way to do it. So when you watch a Star Wars movie, and you get the opening scene, you're not even considering that text scroll as the opening scene for Turkish Star Wars and Southland Tales. Again. It's like a three minute scene. It's hard to ignore it as the opening scene. No, that's the opening scene now. I think that this movie, I guess I'm like, it's taken me forever to describe what I actually think of this movie. It's about as poorly made as the worst stuff we've talked about on the show. Like, um, you know, like the Christmas tree or Rhapsody Street Kids. It's pretty like horrible production quality but it's charming in a sense where it kind of just feels like a home movie that you would see like some kids make and oh, yeah. considering the time period it gets a little bit of like because you, uh, like you say oh but these are fully grown men well time periods right this is much older yeah. than a youtube video um and it's still bet like realist even though i think it's like shit it is better than like an eight-year-old making a youtube video um <laughs> So, like, it's not like, I'm not saying it's, like, literally as bad as a kid making a YouTube video, but it's it's not far off, you know? No, yeah, no, th- this very much feels like the film you and your friends try to make after you see Star Wars for the first time. Right. But, you know, they made costumes, and you even, you even said yesterday, and I agree with you, that, like, some of the regular costume design for just the humans, it's competent. Yeah, no, like, the, the villain in this, I think, has kind of a cool design. Uh, uh, like, with the, the spikes all around his head. I'll respectfully disagree. Because <laughs> okay. he, he is not one of the people that I'm talking about. I thought that looked goofy as hell. I I kind of liked I l- listen if this guy showed up in like a star an actual Star Wars thing I would not even blink I'd be like yep that's what a Star Wars character looks like I wouldn't blink if he showed up in Flash Gordon <laughs> But would you blink if they played more than just the opening notes of the Flash Gordon theme I would <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> Oh man we should talk we got to talk about the music in this movie so like <laughs> It mainly comprises of, uh, comprises, what the fuck am I saying? It mainly consists of an, a sentimental part of the soundtrack of Star Wars. Um, yeah, they, the be- they, went de- they went deep with their Star Wars track and then just fucking stole, like, the most iconic songs from everything else. Well, yeah, Indiana Jones, we made a drinking game out of it by the end of it, and um, it, they did... <laughs> Here's the thing. It was whenever the Indiana Jones theme plays, you take a drink. We made that game up when there was only 30 minutes left of the movie, and I still finished my drink before <laughs> it was over. Like, it played, yeah, like, that's... 10 more times... Before it was over. It played so fucking frequently. Turkish Star Wars drinking game. Drink when they play the Indiana Jones theme. That's the only rule. Play play with beer. Don't do hard liquor. 
Um, take a sip of beer every time. Don't don't fucking kill yourself. They. It, I, you said they play it more than Indiana Jones does. I think <laughs> they like, do. I think they, I I think they do too. And like well, here's, here's the, and here's I we're probably about to say the same thing. And I'll let you say like, it. They will start the song and then they'll just start it again all yep. way through. Yep. It, I I think Indiana Jones plays more of the theme out so you could argue that maybe they like time wise they're playing the tracks the same amount of time, but Indiana Jones plays it out. You know, they play the actual like entire track while because they you know they recognize that you know the theme is iconic, but the rest of the track is important too because it fits the tone of the scene. While in this scene, and they even reprise it a bunch of times. You know, it's like mixed into the score at multiple points. Where in this movie, they like those five seconds, and that's it. They they enjoy those five seconds of the score and then they Yeah. Sorry, keep talking. Um and then also even they don't do this one nearly as much, but they still do it like enough so many times that you need to count with more than two hands. Four seconds of the Flash Gordon theme, because they have to cut it off before lyrics start, which Lyrics start in that song within, like, five seconds of the song. Yeah, no, they cut it off before the first flash! flash! Uh. So it's, it's, it's just... Dun, 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 Over and over and over. Like, usually they will stop when it gets to the flash part, but then in the climax, it's just... Dun 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 And it's like, oh my god... The, these notes were building to something. Yeah. And you've cut out the thing it's building to. Imagine if it's like a rap song where like, yeah, all right, <laughs> all right, here we go. And like it cuts off before like the song. That's what that is. That's what it is. It I, cuts off before the song starts. <laughs> like, why did you like that? What was intri- like that part only works because it builds to something. I'm sure there is some parody rap song where they just go like, yeah, uh, like the whole song and never actually start rapping. Oh, uh, I think it was like a fucking Oni Plays bit where I heard them like joking about that, <laughs> um, where it's just like they yeah, keep no, like building I, it up. That seems like an obvious joke. Yeah, it, it's like, <laughs> yeah. All right. One, two, three. Here we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's here we go. go. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's go. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be the first episode where we skipped the talking about the casting part. <laughs> uh, I wonder if any actors are in both of these movies. Oh, man, you're... That might be research for like in preparation for next episode so we can bring it up because that feels like we would actually have to take a second to figure that out. So we'll update you on that next episode. <laughs> oh no, uh, uh, hold on. I'm going to butcher this. Aitekin Akaya, who plays Ali in this film, is also in 3 Dev Adam. He's really? Like one of the main characters, and he is also in 3 Dev Adam. Oh man. Is he a main character in both? I'm looking to see who he plays. Oh, he's he's Captain America. You know what? I felt like I, I, I thought that someone looked familiar, but it was just kind of like, I'm probably just that's probably just me being racist. <laughs> but uh, no, I guess he did look familiar. Yeah, he did look familiar. This movie is entertaining. It's better than a lot of the stuff that we watch in this in the sense that it's like, you know, charming. But mm -hmm. it's not all of it's charming. There's actually some pretty <laughs> bad things in it involving masks. But, um, well, OK, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's kind of funny that they just have like a super racist blackface masks shoved in there. Because, like, 
I, I feel like they don't understand the context for that. They just saw that in, like, an American movie, and they're like, oh, Americans like this type of character. And, and that is fair. That is fair. Because I, I think sometimes we have to, like, acknowledge that, like, other countries don't have the same context that we do. Um, especially with how old this movie is. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> I could still see that rubbing someone the wrong way watching it. That's the only reason oh. I bring it up. <laughs> I mean, that character doesn't do anything. He's in so one scene. Briefly. Yeah, he's in yeah. one scene. Amongst many other masked characters who are only in that one scene. But, uh, yeah. worth acknowledging at least. Um, for sure. But the... Uh, I, I, for the most part, it's just kind of like... You described it perfectly. It's a film that you make with your friends when you're young. And it gets... And I don't mean... And, you know, it's a little less condescending to say it about this movie because of how old it is. Because of how limited the technology was. With that being said, whenever it's trying to give exposition or explain the story, it's boring as fuck. Nothing redeemable about it. But whenever it's a I fun... Mean- like, we, we we talked about, like, the huge exposition dump at the beginning, but there's more than one, like, huge exposition dump in this right. movie. They, they do it multiple times, and it's like, oh my god, get back to the silly stuff. And, you know, I don't like, I don't normally like to, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say this, I've done this plenty of times on the show. I know that sometimes it's best to wait for the second movie to start comparing and contrasting, because you don't want to give away an obvious winner. Um, But I don't think this is going to give away the winner. I think this one's pretty close, actually. Um, I do think that this movie is better with the gaps of being born, where it's like, yes, there are gaps where it's born, but they are shorter than its um, competition in this episode. I felt like it jumped back into these ridiculous action scenes at a way better pace. And those scenes were cut so fucking quickly and poorly and awkwardly that it's hilarious. It's hilarious every single time there's a fighting scene and I enjoyed those scenes quite a bit. No, the editing in this movie is is pretty funny. Yeah. Um, it is so bad it's good editing. Like, that's... When you say so bad, it's good. A lot of the times it comes from like the over the top performances or how stupid the story is. No, this movie, I'd say the highlight of so bad, it's good is the editing. Yeah, I, I like the fights in this movie, too. Like uh, the scene where he fucking rips a, a monster's arm off and then beats him with his arm <laughs> is really funny to me. <laughs> nah, that was a good one. But like the editor, it's not just how quickly cut it is. But it's the fact that they keep cutting to close-up shots of people just staring at them. <laughs> and it's so it's so funny. It's so awkward. Like it's just like it's something that you would see on like a surrealist like sketch comedy show on Adult Swim now, and you see where they get it from now. It's movies <laughs> like this where it's just like, you know, like there's such a miscommunication yeah. of how to like edit, like how to make a scene feel natural. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when I say this is like the movie you and your friends make after you see Star Wars for the first time, that's part of it, because, like, a a normal Hollywood blockbuster is gonna have, like, establishing shots, but that's not always something you're cognizant of when you're just like, hey, let's do what Star Wars did. So you start your scenes with just, like, random shots of the actors already in the middle of something, and it's like, what? What's going on here? And this movie did have some exterior shots, but what I told you last night, and I stand by this, it literally looks like they took a vacation somewhere, took shots without the actors present, and then just said, yeah, this is where they are right now. I mean, some of it could be stock footage. Um, to me... They definitely, you know, they... they they definitely used footage from Star Wars. It doesn't seem unreasonable that they would just fill their movie with stock footage. That's fair enough, but I, 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 with the way it's filmed, it kind of matches. Whenever it cuts to Star Wars footage, it's obviously like cut into something different. Even if you've never seen Star Wars, <laughs> you would know that's not their footage. You would be able to tell that's not their footage. The scenery shots, I could believe it's just the director took a trip, went to this like tourist attraction and took shots and put it in the movie. That's fair. 
Uh, I'm. I, it's it's totally possible that this is just shots they took. Um, there there is a lot of like fighting in the desert. Uh, yeah, pretty. Like like in in actual Star Wars, they're all not on the desert planet very long, and also they they manage to make all the different places on the desert planet feel unique. In this movie, they're on the desert planet the whole fucking movie, and <laughs> it always looks the same. And that's kind of the point in the original Star Wars. You know, that's where Luke Skywalker lives, and it's not really a satisfying place for him to be. Um, like, it's supposed to be a boring setting, because he's gonna go off on this great journey, you know? Yeah. And then this movie, it's just like, nope, that's the journey. It's like Luke Skywalker playing in his backyard the whole time. Yeah. Um, although, it's, uh, they, the two characters in this movie almost follow, like, R2-D2 and C-3PO's arc a little more <laughs> than, like, Luke Skywalker. It's that's... like, oh, we... We crashed on the desert planet because of the evil empire, and now we gotta deal with being on the desert planet. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, I I was gonna say, I know there's a scene near the end that you thought was really funny, so I was gonna throw it to you to talk about that. If you've got something else to talk about, talk about that, though. Which scene are you talking about? Uh, one of the characters just dies. Like, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I genuinely had to think about it for a second. Um, no, like, he's having issues with his, like, the two main characters, like, they're having, like, issues with their friendship near the end of the movie, a decent bit, and they finally kind of rekindle it. And then the one guy just like he's get he runs back into the action and dies immediately. Like it's it's paced like a comedy. It's paced like like if you're watching like an old like <laughs> an old like Cartoon Network show where a character runs into action and dies immediately. Like that's the joke, but it's done completely unironically here. Like he just gets up, he runs out of the room and just he's dead he's fucking dead immediately and it's so fun yeah no that 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 was a really funny scene I, i'm i'm like right now i'm like i had a hard time remembering that because we just got done watching three giant men that was the movie we watched last night that we watched three giant men tonight and that movie also has some really funny deaths near the end of the movie uh but yeah no that that part was that that probably was my favorite part of the movie honestly just uh, again, it feels like it was shot as a comedy and it wasn't. And that's that's always the funniest thing, right? When you watch a movie and it's like, this would work as satire, but it's not satire. <laughs> it's like, that's why I love yeah. the end. And that's why I love the ending of Skyscraper so much when the bad guy in that movie dies, because it feels like something that would happen in a parody, but it's 100 percent sincere. And it happened in 2018, not the fucking what was this 80s, 70s? This was the 80s, uh, 83, 82. Yeah, um, yeah, I should also mention not only the time period of technology being limited, but also it was made in Turkey. Yeah, no, uh, we, we probably should address, like, the, the foreign aspect of this, because this was, like, kind of a big thing back in the day, like, uh, a lot of Soviet countries would not import... American films, so you would get, like, weird foreign remakes of films in Soviet countries, or even just, like, straight-up rip-offs in countries where, like, you know, copyright law wouldn't be that strong. I, I, I think one of the big things you have to acknowledge, too, is, like, when it comes to, like, countries that are known for, you know, filmmaking... Um, you know, you do have the U.S., J Japan, um, South Korea. There, there's a lot of, like, successful filmmakers there, too, Canada. Turkey's not really one that comes up that much. No. Um, it's kind of like who killed Captain Alex, like, with Uganda. That was that was made in U... That was... That, wait. Is it Uganda? Yeah. Or, is it Uganda? Oh, uh, I think it's you. Uganda. Yes. Like, it, it's like when you get a movie out of a country that's, like, not especially known for, like, filmmaking, you know? 
there is always like a little bit of extra charm there where it's like, okay, they're trying to branch out. They're trying to bring that to their country. Yeah. No, I, that's the thing. Like, I would almost be willing to let both of these movies slide if there weren't so much boring exposition. I, I'd be willing to go like, yeah, these aren't bad movies. They, they were trying something new and creative. Now, I, I don't think they succeeded because both of these movies have, like, long swaths of, like, boring, not very interesting exposition dumps. Yeah. But, like, I there's there's stuff I think unironically works about both of these movies. Uh-huh. Um, even, like, cause this is, like, a very absurd, over-the-top movie, and there's some fun in that absurdity, but there's also stuff that I'm like, no, this this works. They have a couple of sets that look good. The costumes are goofy, but they're, like, there's effort put into them. It's not just something that they bought at a costume store. You know, they they crafted these costumes. Again, like, you mentioned the human co- I know you, I, the villain costume I know you enjoy. I think that the, you know costumes for just the main characters and like the love interest and all that like they're very fitting for the setting you know that I, I, you know those are the costumes that you often don't think about because they're less uh, flashy but they there is some thought being put into there what should regular people be wearing in this universe and yeah the outfits fit yeah um and both movies this one and the movie we're going to be talking about soon they both have like People who seem like they know how to fight. People who seem like... The issue is the cinematography in those scenes. Because the choreography in those scenes sometimes look good. But it's because, like, a lot of these scenes... Um, I'd say it's, like, opposite problems for both movies. Where this one, it's they cut so fucking quickly that it becomes really goofy. Where in um, Three Giant Men, it's like... They have long shots of all of this stuff happening... Where it's like, if you cut this, if you got the right angles, if you cut this properly, these fight scenes would actually be decent. But because you're doing like one big long shot from a distance, you know, you're doing kind of an aerial shot or like a long shot. It looks kind of awkward. It looks kind of goofy. Yeah. Because sometimes just fighting looks goofy. Sometimes fighting just looks goofy. I I definitely think 3 Dev Adam holds on their fight scenes, like, like one shot in their fight scenes for too long. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's the, the act, you will, we'll get to that movie in just a minute, but you know, like in that one, like there is some genuine understanding of fighting demonstrated in that movie. Yeah, no, I, I I think the fight scenes are like one of the things that kind of work about this movie. Yeah. I I think that the cutting's too quick, but I think that if you just slow down a little bit, yeah, it'd be fine. The, the the editing is not quite there to match, but, like, the fighting is actually good. Yeah, honest to God, I could believe that if you would just hire a different editor who didn't cut so fucking fast, it would have been fine. But also, that's kind of what makes it entertaining, too. Like, the fact that it does cut so quickly. Because, again, it's like... Again, it, it is so bad, it's good editing. It kind of adds a layer to this movie where it's like... It's entertaining... Maybe it does kill the quality of the movie a little bit, but it is very entertaining. Is there anything else you want to talk about with this movie, or should we move on? Um, I think I've covered all my grounds. Uh, all right. Uh, then let's talk about the other movie, Three Dev Adam, or Three Giant Men. Um, Three Giant Men, or Three Dev Adam, is a movie that was released in 1973 that's building off the popularity of superhero characters, like Captain America and Spider-Man. Um, it was directed by T. Fikret Yukak. Yukak? I, look up the, look up the, I'm so sorry. There's, there was no way I was ever going to pronounce this right. Um, it has a 4 out of 10 on IMDb, so it has higher ratings than Velma. Uh, and it follows Spider-Man as a bad guy as he is trying to counterfeit money. He's committing three major sins in this story, and he must be stopped. Uh, counterfeiting money, and himself for that matter. Um, murdering people, and premarital sex. So, clearly he, he needs to be put, like, they need to put an end to him. 
So you have our, you know, three heroes, uh, Captain America or Sergeant America, depending on what you're reading, because it's inconsistent. In the movie, the subtitle said Captain America. Uh, Santo, uh, who's based on a real um, real wrestler, real boxer. Uh, was it wrestler or boxer? Wrestler. Wrestler, um, El Santo. Um, same costume and everything for this. And then uh, Captain America's girlfriend. In fact, there's another villain, which is Spider-Man's girlfriend. Um, you don't get much from them other than they're the significant other of these characters. Um, and they come in to stop Spider-Man, put an end to his evil deeds, as he's well-established as a villain in both this movie and the Marvel comics. Um, right. And... They have some success with beating the shit out of him and murdering him, but then he's able to duplicate himself for some reason. Um, not really established why, but just accept it. It's the best part of the movie. Um, and, yeah, they, you know, they keep trying to stop him. And eventually they succeed. <laughs> and I think that's uh, a pretty fair summary of the movie. Am I, am I leaving anything out? No, that's that about covers it. He he is a mafioso. You should mention that Spider Man runs the mafia. Yes, yes, yeah. The, 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 and the police directly bring Captain America and Santo in. You know. Yes. Um, like this is a job that they're brought on to do. Uh, El El Santo is like a, a popular luchador wrestler, right? Who was in a bunch of movies back in the day. Uh a bunch of where where he's like fighting vampires and werewolves and shit so it this is like kind of a normal place for him to show up granted it's not actually el santo it's like a fake el santo but uh they they kind of parody this in um jesus christ vampire hunter because el santo is in that movie too <laughs> uh <laughs> that's funny it is um, I actually, I actually just got, like, a Blu-ray set of a bunch of El Santo movies, so, uh, like, if, if you want to do, like, uh, an Out of the Ring about a Santo movie, we could easily do one of those. I was gonna say, Out of the Ring works too, but when, when is the Drunk Rake and El Santo coming out? <laughs> that's, that's also, no, he was in a lot of movies, though. And here's here's the funny thing. Like most of his movies he's playing himself. He's just playing El Santo, the the wrestler character. But uh in one movie he's a police chief, but he was like insistent on keeping his mask on at all times. That's like a huge thing about El Santo. In fact, it's weird in this movie cuz they have like some alter ego for him and it's like Santo didn't take his mask off. Don't don't have El Santo walking around without his mask on. That's not El Santo. Santo always wore his mask. I I'll I'll be put it this way. I don't know much about El Santo, but like, tell me. Okay, I'm gonna reference something. South Park has an episode where it's like a wrestling episode where Kenny is like this you know Mexican wrestler who never takes his mask off, which works because Kenny never shows his face in South Park. Would you say that's likely a reference to El Santo? Probably. Like, that's Probably. how significant he is. Like, he, he does have enough significance to where South Park would make a reference to El Santo. Absolutely. That that checks out to me. Um, there's, like, a, a gender-swapped version of him in Alejandro Horoski's Santa Sangre. Um, but he, he was so famous for just, like, always wearing his mask that... Uh, he, he he had, like, a real normal passport, but he asked the Mexican government if he could have, like, a fake passport where he was still wearing his mask. <laughs> so he would, like, show that off to people. It's like, no, I always wear my mask. Look, here's my passport. And, like, on his passport picture, he's still wearing the mask. <laughs> There's something both incredibly charming and sad about that at the same time. Like, I could see the good and bad in doing something like that. Yeah, because I mean, I think that could I think that could be a very nice treat for people, you know, like it's like, oh, you're pl building up this character, but people like this character and you're never breaking character like that's a pretty good commitment to your bit. There's something admirable about that, especially if it's a oh, character yeah. that so many people appreciate. At the same time, it's like, are you afraid to be yourself, man? <laughs> El, El Santo was on kayfabe way before the WWE was. Uh, -huh. uh 
I think he was, like, the first person to do the wearing a mask over his mask gag. <laughs> like, he, he pulled off his mask and was wearing another mask underneath it. No, 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 no. Food Fight did that first with the hat. Right, makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I I think it's I think it's really funny that this movie is called Three Giant Men and it's clearly like promoting itself on like oh yeah these three famous heroes Spider Man Captain America El Santo but Spider Man is the villain. Oh, <laughs> uh. it's just it's wild that Green Spider Man is the villain in this. You know what this movie has that, as much as I enjoy some of the things in Turkish Star Wars, you know what this movie has that Turkish Star Wars doesn't even come close to having? What? It, it's Evil Spider-Man. <laughs> e- evil Spider-Man made me laugh so fucking hard where if <laughs> this movie's last ten minutes was consistent throughout the entire movie, it, like, would be in the top five. It's not. It has born exposition dumps, and I'm gonna say born exposition dumps that are worse than what Turkish Star Wars has. Um, not much worse, not by like a bar- large margin, but I, I'd say there's a lot of scenes in this movie where I was not interested. Hi. But, um, but oh my God, not only is Turkish Star Wars, like tff, Turkish Spider-Man funny throughout the movie because of that laugh, but the last 10 minutes where they, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> killing him and he keeps immediately showing like immediately showing up in the next shot laughing doing that same laugh every time that is one of my favorite things that we've have have had i can't talk i'm sorry have had happen in a hollow victories movie that is like i that is up there with the funniest funniest shit in book of henry for me where yeah. it's like, if the entire movie kept up that level of consistency with that, those last ten minutes, it, it, it would legitimately be one of my favorite movies that we've done for the show. It's just, it's not that consistent. It, it's funny. It's it, There's other scenes other than those last ten minutes that are funny. There's other, I love the fucking scene where um, evil Spider-Man is driving off and Captain America latches on their car and they're both punching each other through the window. That scene's great. There's a lot of great moments, but those last 10 minutes, I, I was fucking dying during those last 10 minutes. Like that is some of the funniest shit we've covered on the show. No, e- evil Spider-Man, evil green Turkish Spider-Man is like the highlight of the movie. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, I think I heard, like, there's been a hint that he's gonna show up in Across the Spider-Verse. If he does show up, I'm sure it'll be, like, a two-second cameo, but still. Like, oh. if, if, there, if, if there's, like, a two-second cameo for Evil Green Turkish Spider-Man in Across the Spider-Verse, I will be totally fine with that. He does not have to do anything as long as he is there. If he is there and does his laugh, let me put it this way: If I gave across <laughs> the, if I gave across the Spider Verse an eight out of ten, that would put it to a nine out of ten. <laughs> that that fact, he does have to do the laugh too. I, I him just showing up in the background isn't going to cut it. it. It'll be cool. It, that'll give it like point point three points, you know. But uh, <laughs> if I want to get really specific, that could bring it to an eight from a nine, but there has to be like a lot of other things too to do that. But, um, but if he does the laugh, he shows up and does the laugh that, that that's a whole point. That is a whole fucking out of 10 points. That's a whole point for that movie. Yeah. If they do the fucking evil Spider-Man laugh. I agree. It is very funny. So we've talked about Santo and we've talked about Spider-Man. Do you want to talk about Captain America? He's kind of the least interesting part of this movie. Other than the fact that, they do use Captain America. Yeah, no, it's funny that he's Captain America in this Turkish film. Right. Like they're they're being, they're really looking out for us with their patriotism, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh <clears throat> I think it's funny that he's obviously a Turkish man, that his 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 alt his his like secret identity is not American at all. <laughs> What um yeah I don't I don't have much to say about him sadly he's fine you know like yeah I'll say this I think all, all, I think all three you know give him props but also maybe like 
be a little safe when you're making movies. He is really holding on to that moving car. Like he is really like he he was that that was an actor who was dedicated to trying to make that oh, scene yeah. cool. There's oh man, that's something worth talking about. There's shit in this movie that just flat out looked like it was dangerous to film, and they did it anyway. There's a scene where they're merging onto the road, and it almost looks like a car like had to fucking slam on their brakes not to hit them. Yeah, no, I that's that is one thing about these like homegrown foreign versions of films. Where they, they'll they just, like, they'll do dangerous stuff without the safety precautions that, like, Hollywood typically has. And, like, y- you can, like, tell in the film sometimes. It's like, wow, okay, they were they were really dedicated to that it, stunt. And In Turkish Star impress- Wars, they were falling off horses. Yeah, it impresses me, but it's also like, okay, dude, maybe you should be a little more safe than that. Maybe it's like, at the same time, America, even American movies have a history of not being very safe, and then they got safer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, uh, a lot of people had to get hurt, and a lot of people had to die for the American film industry to get where it is today. Yeah, maybe that's what their mindset is. Maybe it's like, well, if we want this to go anywhere, we gotta commit to it. And that's sad. I don't want it to be like that. I'm not (laughs) going to encourage that, but I... I'll understand it more from a 80s Turkish movie or a 70s Turkish movie um, than a modern American movie. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it, there was some dangerous stuff in this movie. That's the thing I like about this movie, too. I mean, I like it. And, you know, it, it, the, this compliment kind of applies to Turkish Star Wars, too. But it really it, these guys really fucking cared. They were trying their fucking best. Oh, yeah. No, that's. I, I was saying earlier, like, I'm not going to call these good movies because they do have those long, boring scenes, but, like, the dedication to their craft, I think, like, more than makes up for the fact that these are, like, not the most original movies, but, like, I, I'm willing to let them have it. I'm willing to let them just, like, like, yeah, go ahead, steal footage and scenes from Star Wars. Use American superheroes in your movie. Who cares? Go on, man. Uh, I actually, I didn't know if I was going to get this or not. I, I, I did ask for it, but I asked for two books and I said, you can get me either of these books or you can get me both books. I just got Ed Glazer's How the World Remade Hollywood for Christmas. And uh, it, it's like a whole book of foreign ripoffs like these. And it does include uh, Turkish Star Wars and 3 Dev Adam. So that's nice. This is a little off topic, but uh, it's kind of on topic at the same time. Where I feel like one of the things with um, Three Giant Men is like... To me, it almost feels like a movie that doesn't want to have those superhero characters in it. Because it often has them out of <laughs> costume. For the fight scenes, not evil Spider-Man, but the two, like Captain America and Santos, they do have them out of the costumes kind of a lot in this movie. Um, and it, it, it kind of reminds me of like me and Chris were talking about this paradox in a Simpsons episode for a video we just recorded where Bart says, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, which in that episode, they even kind of make fun of that as a paradox. But it, it, it is a paradox where it's like it kind of applies to this movie where on one hand, it feels feels like if they had their own way, like if they got to be full, like fully creative with it, the superheroes would not be in it. It would just be an original story. Yeah. Um, on the other, uh, and like, and you can see like kind of, that kind of as like a crutch on their end from like expressing themselves because they feel like they have to do that for it to get any recognition. At the same time, it makes it so much funnier. Like it, well, it, it, it does add a lot to the movie. Like it does, it does help the movie. They were smart to do that. I, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. It almost feels like this is a script for a totally unrelated movie, and then they just were like, "Uh, put Captain America, El Santo, and Spider Man in there. You know, add add some like American superheroes, and you know, Mexico. That's close enough to America. Add El Santo." But, uh, at the same time, would we be talking about it today if it didn't have Captain America, El Santo, and Spider-Man in it? Right, and I was, like, during, when we were watching this, I very harshly compared it to Spider-Man and Elsa videos. 
because it just felt like not not because it's like just like those like obviously there's a difference but it's like it's grabbing random characters and throw it in to appeal to people right no yeah i i feel like the same mindset behind those videos kind of goes into this it's like People like Captain America. People like Spider-Man. They are popular characters. Let us put the popular characters in our thing. At, at the same time, when you look at re our resources today versus their resources then, it's a lot yeah, more no, I, easy to defend them than it is those people who made those fucking... And also, they didn't make no, this movie no. for kids. They made it violent yeah, and gory. Yeah, yeah no, this, this is a movie... This is, like, something that was meant to be released to theaters for audiences. It is not, like, just a YouTube video that's yeah. there to, like, game the algorithm. I want the people who made Spider-Man and Elsa videos to be arrested. I don't want the people who made this movie to be arrested. I agree. <laughs> like, I, I respect the people who made this movie. Because, honest to God, um, going back to the comparison side of this show... I think this movie's way better shot than Turkish Star Wars. And I think a lot of that has to do with the filters added on to Turkish Star Wars, where there's, like, often shots where they're cutting off a lot of the frame. I think it's supposed to be like you're seeing the shot through a mask. Um, so there's, like, a lot of black spots on the screen. Like, it's a very weird, like, aspect ratio sort of thing. And they don't do that too much in the movie, mainly just during that opening scene, but then occasionally throughout. But that looks really bad, like... It's trying to do something interesting visually, but it just looks like shit. Um, and then there's that green filter they have throughout a lot of the scenes. And it's just, it, it doesn't look good. Where in this movie, I think the color's fair for the time period it came out, the equipment they had. Um, and I think that while Turkish Star Wars is better with the editing, weirdly, like, I mean, it's not better with the, it's not really better with the editing. It's just, it has more shot variety. Um, it's more entertaining with the editing. I would say yeah. Three Dev Adam has the better editing. Yeah. But it's it's still sort of sloppy editing, and, like, I almost prefer it to be, like, way sloppier like it is in Turkish Star Wars, so you can at least laugh at it. Right. There's nothing that notable about the editing in Three Giant Men, where in Turkish Star Wars, it's so fucking ridiculous and over the top. That it's like, yeah, okay, there's something to talk about here. With Turkish Star Wars, it's like, yeah, it's not great editing. What else is there to say? Yeah. We should probably mention, uh, these movies are actually a little difficult to get a hold of. Um, so we yes. watched, we watched the version of these films that are on YouTube. Right. Which, uh, so, so we were not watching these in, like, the highest quality way. Granted... If you want to watch either of these movies, you're likely also going to have to watch the YouTube versions. Oh, for sure. Unless you just happen to own... Like, Turkish Star Wars has had some home media release. I don't... I think 3 Dev Adam had, like, a limited DVD release. And, like, that's it. I don't, I don't think there's much home media for 3 Dev Adam. I think that we should just be grateful that these movies are out there in the first place. Oh yeah. So uh, we were we were not watching the best version of these movies uh visually. Also it seems like maybe there was stuff missing from either cut cuz both of the YouTube videos were about 3 minutes shorter than the actual runtime of the films. I'm pretty sure that's just like credits and stuff but i can't say that for certain and hell maybe like the listed runtime isn't even accurate because if you told me there were scenes missing from turkish star wars i'd believe you granted right. that's just because the movie is like pure fucking nonsense maybe it is just pure fucking nonsense but yeah I, I definitely think there could be stuff missing from that movie. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just, like, the, again, like, we talked about how the editing is so bad it's good. It's very possible that, you know, that that's just all, that's just all it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that, I think that it's, I think the way we watch these two movies is fair. Well, yeah, because I, I feel like that's the way they are going to be viewed currently 
in unless someone wants to do like a a nice Blu-ray release of these, I could see someone doing that too. Like you know, yeah, like uh, American Genre Film Archive, they put out these films. I I snatch that up. But uh, currently, I mean, Turkish Star Wars, it might be difficult just because of, like, all the s- footage they steal and the music they steal from other films. <laughs> like, you'd, you'd have to put up the rights for the Star Wars footage and the Indiana Jones theme and the Flash Gordon theme. But 3 Def Adam, uh, I mean, I guess 3 Def Adam does use the Marvel comic characters, but still, still, I think you could get away with that. I have a Blu-ray of, uh... The Dragon Lives Again, the Bruce Lee movie where he's friends with, like, Popeye and the One-Armed Swordsman, and he's fighting James Bond and Dracula. Um, so, like, I'm sure you could get 3 Dev Adam on Blu-ray. But yeah, the, the way we watch them is, like, the way anyone is going to be watching them currently. Are you ready to move on to voting? Yeah. Yeah. I know which one I'm picking. Right. It was close. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think it was pretty close. Um, we may even disagree on this I, one. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I, here's the thing. I, I think we do kind of disagree. Because you were saying, like, the, the boring parts of 3 Div Adam are more boring. And maybe in some sense you're right. I, I, I kind of get where you're coming from with that. It, it, it's not that I think they're more boring. It's that I think that there's more of it. Hmm. I think that three dev Adam has like longer gaps. I, I feel like the boring parts of Turkish star Wars, there's like a whole bunch of shit going on and it really expects you to pay attention. Even when like it, it loses your interest almost immediately. With 3 Dev Adam, I think the boring parts are so totally unimportant that, like, if you just completely ignore them, if you just completely zone out during those parts, you'll still know what's going on. I so think in now- that regard, I I would consider 3 Dev Adam the better movie. I think I enjoyed watching 3 Dev Adam a little better. I do think they are very similar films with very similar problems. We're actually on the same page. Okay. So here's my thing. I do, I stand by what I said about that, but one, Three Dev Adam delivered some of the best moments we've had from this entire show, I think. So it gets a lot of points for that. But also, even though I do think the exposition scenes are still like, they're, like there's more of it to me, in my opinion, I think that there's more boring parts in this movie than there are in the other one. There's still a decent bit of boring parts in both movies. It's not like it's significant. And also, I think this movie, you know, there's other things to acknowledge. My personal rating is different from my actual ranking. I do think there, there's, like, at least one or two movies that I have, like, I gave the win to, even though I enjoyed the other one more. I think that has happened before on the show. Um, where I'm trying to be a little objective about it. Like, just, just a tiny bit. Because um, I think... Three Dev Adam is better made. I think it's a better made movie, and it's older than Turkish Star Wars. So yeah, um, three Three Dev Man, I I I enjoyed that a decent bit more. I if I like thing uh, one thing I was gonna say way earlier is that like Book of Henry, I'm ready to show that to people. You know, I'm ready to like have like cousins over and show it to them. Um, these two movies like. I don't think either of them have hit that point where it's like, I really want to show it to other people. I thought they were funny, but there's too much boring stuff to where I want to show it to people. With Three Left Men, I might show it to people and just skip boring parts. Like, just say, okay, you don't need to see this part. Because uh, yeah. uh, that ending is so funny to me. Yeah, and, and it's also really funny to just have a movie of, like, El Santo and Captain America fighting Spider-Man. Right. Right. In, like, a um, mafia setting for some reason. Super curious to see what the viewer interpretation of this was. Viewer vote. Uh, yeah, the audience is against us. It's 70% Turkish Star Wars to 30% 3 Dev Adam. I'm willing to say that's sort of the same thing we had with, like, Garfield and Marmaduke, where, like, Garfield is just a popular movie. 
yeah, yeah, I think I think more people have seen Turkish Star Wars than have seen Three Dev Adam, which is kind of ironic because uh, going into this, I had seen Three Dev Adam, but I'd never seen Turkish Star Wars. I think some of that's kind of um, funny about it too. On top of that, it's just like nowadays, like these are both Disney properties <laughs> that people are comparing <laughs> already. So I think this is a better pair up than like. I think this is a really good pair up, honestly. Yeah. No, I, I was happy with this pair up. Yeah. Um, um, Turkey did a better thing with these properties than Disney did. Uh. <laughs> you don't have to take what I'm saying seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, El Santo and Captain America is way fucking better of a crossover than fucking Infinity War. Listen, 3 Dev Adam is better than Captain America Civil War. I will say that without a single shred of irony. 3 Dev Adam is better than Captain America Civil War. <laughs> I would rather watch this movie than 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 Civil War. Uh, I, I uh, like Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was that was one of my least favorite MCU, and so that was that was the part where I started to turn on the MCU. Maybe, maybe Age of Ultron. I think Age of Ultron is where I started to turn on the MCU, but that was I, the one where I'm like, okay, I don't like the MCU anymore. Yeah, I fucking hated Age of Ultron. And, uh, Civil War, I, I don't know, Civil War is one of my favorites. It's weird. <laughs> Um, I, it, it, it was so low stakes to me. I, I hated that they, like... It, that's, it started to feel like a TV show where it's like, oh, we can't have any big consequences because we gotta reset the status but, quo by the end. Everyone's gotta still be friends so they can fight together when Infinity War happens. <laughs> I liked it because it, address, it kind of addresses... I'm not gonna make a big conversation out of this, but kind of like... It at least, like, made an effort to address, like, what different opinions could come from the heroes. You know, you can say, like, they didn't go far I, I enough mean, with it. But I felt like it was an interesting take. Like, it, I, I will agree it's a watered-down take. But I think they, you know, it, 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 it was something that needed to happen. I think that Black Panther is more interested in that movie than he is in his own movie. I actually like him a lot in Civil War. Um, yeah. No, fair enough. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and be like, "Oh, you're such a fucking dipshit for liking that <laughs> one." But we we you know we should have a pair up eventually, and this should be like what? a special. This should be a special episode. This shouldn't be like anytime soon. But we should just have a movie that you you hate that everyone loves, and a movie that I hate that everyone loves. And I'm not saying it's gonna be Civil War. I'm saying that we should just have like unpopular opinions. The episode. Oh. <laughs> uh... I don't really like Winter Soldier either, and that's I one seen people it. fucking love. People fucking love Winter Soldier, and I'm like, it's okay. I haven't seen it. My issue is I don't think Captain America is that interesting of a character. No. He's okay. I... He's just okay. Like, Civil War I liked so much because Captain America, it barely feels like his movie. It feels like <laughs> Avengers 3. And, you know, no, it feels like the real Avengers 2, because David Ultron was fucking boring. Bore, fuck, I can't talk. It was fucking boring. I think I like the first Captain America movie better than the other two. Uh, for me, the problem is, like, I just, I think the action is bad. I think the action is poorly shot. It's not fun. To me, Winter Soldier I, is... Go ahead, sorry. You say what you're gonna say, because I was gonna put us back on track. I, I know we're off track, but I think sometimes these off-track moments are a little fun. <laughs> we just gotta, like, get back on track, you know? Um, to me, Winter Soldier is in my least favorite like period, period of time in Marvel movies. Granted, I skipped Phase 4 entirely. I only saw the new Spider-Man. That is it. Um, but, like, Winter Soldier's the gray period of Marvel movies, where all of them were just, like, really dull-colored films. And then Guardians of the Galaxy came in and fixed it, and then Phase 3 was so much better than fucking Phase 2. Like, in every way, Phase 3 was better than Phase 2. And then Phase 4, I don't know, people don't like it. I have to, ch I haven't checked it out myself, I can't say. I might love Doctor Strange, I might love the new Black Panther, but Phase 3 I loved, and Phase 2 I didn't. 
uh, phase four, I think, has just been like, okay, that was a little, like, like, I would say there's probably more, I say, I'd say I like it better than phase two, but like, I don't know, there's no, there, there haven't been any movies in it that I'm like, oh, this one, this one's fucking great, but like, they're all just like, yeah, that was fine, that was a decent movie. I think, I think phase two led to some good stuff, I, Age of Ultron, I hated that movie, but I like the hammer scene. That's the only part of Age of Ultron I like, but it has a good payoff in Infinity. No, a, uh, Endgame. Yeah. Um. I, I. I. So does Hawkeye's family. That's like actually. I take it back. That's the other scene I like is seeing Hawkeye has a family and the others come to their place because that just kind of like added a you know different. Pr- I, I'm. I'm so sorry. You know. Fuck it. Stop. Stop. Let's move on. I. I'm. We're gonna have like a forty minute discussion about this if I don't stop it now. So let's stop. <laughs> Yeah, no, the the MCU is definitely something that uh, that you could talk about for a while. Three Dev Adam wins. <laughs> uh, glad we got that out of the way. Next episode's gonna do us no favors either, because we're we're diving right back into the fucking Marvel train. Um, it's Age of Ultron versus Civil War. There it is, finally. The matchup we've all been waiting for. Uh, next time on Hollow Victories, uh, we, we, we've, got a, we've got the return of a very dear friend. I'm referring, of course, to Nicolas Cage because it's satanic comic book adaptations specifically from Neville Dean and Taylor. It's Jonah Hex versus Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And uh, we will also be joined by uh, our dear friend Olivia from Smash Pack. Yeah! Hooray! Olivia's coming back to talk about comic books this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Olivia... uh, No... (laughs) Well, I know Olivia wasn't in Jonah Hex. Uh, Nicholas Cage wasn't in Jonah Hex, though. So no. Well, BoJack Horseman's in it. BoJack Horseman's gonna be in a <laughs> Hall of Victories movie. Oh, it's gonna be our first Megan Fox too. <laughs> Hold on, Will Arnett's in that movie? <laughs> yeah, it's Lieutenant Grass. Fuck, I don't remember. That. I googled this. That's the only reason I have this. And Thanos uh, is gonna be in it. And John Malkovich will be returning. That's that's the other big returning actor. What was he John in again? Malkovich. He was in Aragon. He he was the bad guy in Aragon. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Aragon's kind of one of those like <laughs> you, for, you you forget it. Yeah, you forget it quickly even though John Malkovich is in it, you forget it quickly. Yeah. But John Malkovich said himself he's a shitty actor, so. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like John Malkovich. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Malcolm. he is a shitty act. Maybe he is a shitty actor, but I like he, I, he's good at being a shitty actor. <laughs> I, I I I do kind of respect him, but I don't think he's very good. I think he is. There are I, there there are movies I like him in, but I mean I could say that about almost any actor. <laughs> being John Malkovich and Burn After Reading, he fit those parts really well. Absolutely. Imagine if he did a bad job playing John Malkovich, where people were just like, he doesn't, I don't, I don't buy him as John Malkovich. We should have well, had, but, like... But he's playing these other characters inside John Malkovich. I think he does a good job with that. Because it's supposed to be awkward. Yes. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be off-putting. Now everybody's like, no, I don't think he, I don't really buy him as John Malkovich. I think Chris Pratt should have been in that role. Being John Malkovich remake with Chris Pratt as John Malkovich. <laughs> uh, He's um, also technically an adaptation, your favorite movie. Very briefly. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, one of my favorite movies. I wouldn't call it number one, but it's in the top ten. Other things we should mention. We have a Hollow Victory spinoff series now called Hollow Victories Out of the Ring over on my second channel where we discuss... Films related to our matchups. We we started with Donnie Darko since we we did Southland Tales, 
And uh, ahead of our next episode, I would also like to do one on the Crank movies. Since it is Neville Dean and Taylor, the, the creators of the Crank duology. It, so, uh... And which movie is if, this, uh... What, what episode does this connect to? That connects to our next episode. Uh, oh, okay. Jonah, Jonah Hex versus Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Because so of the directors, if, if, or is that connected to Crank? Because because of the directors. Okay. I Yeah, I didn't know who directed that one. So if you want to hear us talk about good movies, I don't... Uh, may, maybe we'll throw some, like, less than good movies in there, too. But, uh, you know, if you, if you want to hear us talk about movies that are not Hollow Victories, Hollow Victories out of the ring over on our... Uh, over on my second channel, I should say. Yes, the Donnie Darko one was a lot of fun. It was nice to talk about yeah. like a, a quality movie. Because that was a good and, movie. Yeah, and Donnie Darko's like a movie that there's a lot to talk about with, I think, so. I think I think it was a perfect first episode for that. Absolutely. Um, anything else? No, I'm good. All right. Uh, well, from my co-host Mackle Shadackle, I am Matt Presents. I will see you in the next one. Peace.